Hello and welcome to Marketing Speak. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer. I'm so excited to have Ken Okazaki with us today. He is the video marketing guy. Ken helps find ideal customers on social media for you. And uh, he is extremely engaging on video. And video is an extremely engaging format. So you're going to be really wanting to hear more about how to leverage video in this episode. There's uh, little information uh, available in the form of a concise system to monetize video. There's lots on kind of best practices on how to shoot video, on how to edit video, on how to present that video in an online course format, for example, or do Facebook Lives. But what about monetizing it? That's where we're going to go deep in this episode. So it's great to have you on the show, Ken. All right. Thanks, Stefan. I appreciate that. And uh, it, you're so right about that. Uh, every other influencer out there, and I'm talking about the Gary V's, the Grant Cardones, everybody who's crushing it on social media with video, they keep saying, make more video, make more video. But they, everybody's, they're very intuitive about how they do it, which is natural talent. And a lot of people have a, a gap between knowing they need to make video and then performing and monetizing that video content and doing it at scale. And that's that's the tricky part, which luckily for me, I've I've just had a lot of clients who had tons of success and I just distilled that into some systems and frameworks that you can duplicate for almost anybody getting started. So that's that's really what I love doing is deconstructing that and sharing it. Right. And and you learned from the school of hard knocks, figuring it out yourself. You didn't just buy somebody's course and like, oh, I'll just R and D that, rip off and duplicate it and you know What's what's the uh, underwear gnomes? Uh, step one, collect underwear. Step two is a big question mark. Step three is profit, right? <laughs> like, there's something in between there. Uh, I want a profit, but how do I actually get from A to Z? So uh, you learned from kind of figuring things out on your own and uh, uh, being passionate about uh, filmmaking and video and photography and that, and you traveled the world we both traveled the world we were both uh, part of uh, tony robbins platinum partnership partnership so uh do you want to give a, a little bit of a background here on sure. this sure absolutely now i think i first got the bug for uh producing video when i was about 16 and my dad was you know he's an an entrepreneur and he had started a video production company to you know produce english teaching videos in japan and uh, you know, every day I was surrounded with with crew and equipment and sets and gear, and I just was fascinated by it. But I didn't really understand. Well, social media wasn't really invented yet. Now, fast forward a few years, we were in Tony Robbins' environment together. We traveled the world, and you know, it's a lot of large scale events. And then I decided to go in business with my father into the events business. And one of the ways that we'd fill the room, and every other month we'd do a large public business workshop and this would be in the you know the thousands of people every single time uh, we'd have to put butts in seats and that's anybody who's run events knows that that's a tricky thing especially when uh, you're selling at the price point we were which is front row seats seven thousand dollars back row seven hundred dollars and we had to pack it each time and that's when my survival instincts kicked in and i had to figure out this thing called marketing and one thing i found without a shadow of a doubt is that video convert better than anything else and yes trial and error sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't but we had to produce a whole bunch of uh, marketing content to get people to come and invest time and money to sit down and uh, be educated in a live seminar workshop now with that working out the way it did um, a lot of people think well why didn't you just continue the truth is it's not for everybody and uh, running large-scale events I realized a couple years in was not for me and well it's pretty I, stressful I for business. one thing yeah all right right it's mm -hmm. uh high yeah, pressure I, and if you mess up you could lose many hundreds of thousands of dollars when you're talking about a large scale event like uh 10, people or 5,000 people right definitely and i'm gonna be fully transparent here there have been a lot of events where i lost money and uh, the people in the crowd have no idea. They're all they they're they're inspired. They're they're rocking out to the music, and they walk away with some tools they can use. But the guy sitting in the back room counting the numbers 
boy, he is usually in a lot of stress and pressure. And that, that was me at one point. So uh, I pivoted from that, took, a, took that, uh, just the marketing bit of the business, and which became primarily 90% just video marketing. And I started a video marketing agency because that's the part I enjoyed, producing video, seeing conversions and getting people to actually invest time and money into uh, educational or you know personal development courses. So that was my, my intro into video marketing. And this is circa, I guess, 2015 or 16 when I made that pivot, mm-hmm. somewhere around there, a- after we had met. Yeah. Yeah. And you did, how, how long did you do Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership for where you kind of follow Tony around the world and all that? Okay. So I did about that same amount of time. And wow, that was life changing for me. Like I met my wife because of it. I uh, had a spiritual awakening in India because of it on on one of the Platinum Partner trips. And uh, um, I had a physical transformation too. See, folks who are listening, you can see that on my other podcast. Uh, website on on stephanspencer.com and as well but if you go to marketingspeak.com i mean if you go to get yourself optimized.com which is a personal development podcast and you go to the uh, about page and you'll see the before and after yeah uh, pretty striking i people didn't recognize me after my transformation and i i have tony robbins to thank at least partially for that of course i <laughs> i did the work but he's the one who inspired me <laughs> And uh, so what were some of the big kind of transformational uh, outcomes that you got out, out of being a plat? Yeah, thank you for that. The, it, it's, I just want to circle back to what you just said there. You know how uh, you did the work, but, you know, Tony was the, the impetus, the, you know, the, the catalyst that got you there. Right. Now, it, it's so true. People buy courses and I see people, so many people talk about, oh, this person's a scam or that doesn't work or this doesn't work for me. And the truth is, it only works when you do the work. And, you know, he's not going to come, or nobody that I know of is actually, except your mother maybe, is going to come and get you out of bed, make sure you eat right, exercise right, get to school, get good. Like, that is a part of just being an adult. You take some advice, and you decide what you're going to do with it. And the results are on you. But for somebody to have done all the research and compile it and give you a laser-focused path to achieving similar results as them, it's up to you whether you want to take that path. So it's it's such a misnomer sometimes that you know Tony doesn't really change your life. You change your life. He just yeah. shows you how. Yep. Now uh, the the question you I just totally forgot the question you asked. What was that? <laughs> how, well, what were some of your transformational outcomes that you got out of being a plat for almost three years? Perfect. Yes. The well, I, definitely one of them was my relationship. I was already married at the time, but I didn't know what marriage could be. I didn't know what relationships could be. I didn't understand the potential until I experienced it. And I think the biggest transformation I can think of is when me and my wife went to uh, the Ultimate Relationship uh, Seminar in uh, in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, I can't even talk about what's going on there. I think I actually shouldn't because some of it is so out there that it's, you know, the general public wouldn't <laughs> get it. But it deepened my understanding and uh the, the passion I have around my marriage so much that it actually made everything worth it. All the little annoyances, all the er, everything that goes into a marriage that makes it work, the work you do, yeah. it becomes 100% worth it once you have that, the return that comes to you in the form of the, the deepness and the passion. Now, that's that was the biggest one. Oh, I'd say a That's close amazing. second would be the connections I made. So, so we got to at least tease our listener with something from that uh, that that workshop, that intensive. Sure. Uh, like for me, one of the things I got out of it was learning about the five sexual blueprints from Jaya, who's one of the world leading experts on. Well, she's a world class sexologist. And uh, she's actually my very first guest from my other show from Get Yourself Optimized. So, listeners, if you're intrigued by this, episode number one of Get Yourself Optimized is Jaya, the sexologist. And so there's five sexual blueprints. There's sensual, ero- um, let's see, oh, it's the erotic uh, blueprints. Uh, so sexual, sensual, um, uh there's there's a kind of a combination of all all five. Um, 
There's help me out here, Ken. <laughs> I I can't remember the names. I just remember the experience, if I'm honest. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Kink is another one. The... And and yeah. there's one more. Uh, whatever. So, anyways, it's amazing. And once you understand that, uh, and you can know what your partner's primary blueprint is, and then you cater to that instead of just what you like, and then. Uh, she also knows yours. Oh my God! Yes. It whole other level, whole other level. Uh, yeah. Wow. Anyway, so that, I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole. But uh, <laughs> how about one little tidbit that you got from that workshop that was really transformational God. for you? Uh, I think that uh, you know how all the men went and did one thing, and the women did another thing, and what I. You know, we actually were taking lessons from somebody who trained the Navy SEALs in the U.S. And you think this is a relationship seminar. Why are we learning about hand-to-hand -hand combat and how to, you know, literally disassemble another person's body so that they can't uh, hurt you or the people you love? But the thing is, the, the way it heightens the, the primal masculinity that's in each of us and the way it heightens the, the, the females, you know, they were doing something completely different to get them in deep into their femininity and, and rip off all the masks that they, they're forced to wear a lot of times in the, in the professional environment. And the evenings, wow, when it's, it's like two extremely powerful neodymium magnets going, you know, <laughs> click together. Yeah, it's, it's like the polarity is just so accentuated. It's yeah, it's powerful. Yeah, you, you, you were at the that. one where Tim Larkin was teaching, right? right? Tim yes. Larkin, he's the founder of Target Focus Training, and you learn in slow motion how to disable uh, somebody who is trying to attack you. And, and because you do it in slow motion and the attacker, your partner in this, who's not trying to be your friend or whatever, they're symbolizing the... Uh, the attacker, you both do it in slow motion enough times until it gets into your muscle memory, and then you've got you just you can protect your partner. It's pretty amazing. Yes. So yeah, I, I love that. So a little a little aside there, nothing to do with marketing, but kind <laughs> of it does because if you know what your partner wants, in this case, when we're talking about marketing, you know what your uh, your your target avatar wants. And maybe they want to be taught via video and you feel more comfortable uh, being behind a microphone with no video and it's just audio. Well, you're not meeting them where they want to be. So, yeah, I can find a way to make it marketing related. <laughs> yeah, I think I think so. I think so. It's it all it all comes full circle one way or another, because, you know, marketing is, you know, it's it's not one dimensional marketing is one person's ideas and thoughts connecting with another person's ideas and thoughts. And when there's an alignment, that's when a transaction can happen. When there's no alignment, no transaction happening, the marketing falls apart. It's, it's really that simple. And uh, it's, it's the same dynamics that happen in, uh, you know, peer relationships, uh, you know, romantic relationships, uh, boss and, and employee relationships. It's all comes full circle. Is there a mutual understanding and communication going on. If so, positive energy. If not, it falls apart, yep. period. Yeah. Now, what would you say to somebody who's uh, resistant to this because maybe they have performance anxiety or they, mm -hmm. they, they wonder, who am I to be on camera, being the teacher, the coach, the leader, the inspiring personality like who am i to do that i'm too shy or i'm not worthy or i just feel uncomfortable i don't like being uncomfortable what would you tell somebody uh, who has those kinds of fears or insecurities or uh or blockages you know i think if i were to speak to anyone that would be the version of myself before i i started doing personal development but the because I was completely that I didn't feel like I had anything to give. But if anyone's there at that stage now, then I think that if you can understand if you've been able to help yourself in any situation, whether it's your health, whether it's a, a specific skill, uh, whether it's dog training, you know, it doesn't matter. But if you're able to make some progress and then you think to yourself, how long did I struggle with that? And what if somebody had helped me earlier on how much pain or how much struggle would I have been able to 
skip over, mm. then I think that might give you the motivation to take what you have and actually start sharing it with the world. Now, the advice I have is, uh, you know, I see so many people with their, their, their cell phones doing selfie videos, and a lot of people do a great job. But one of the biggest distractions is yourself. If you're focused on that, that you know, the image of yourself, and you're not even looking into the lens, then what there's a couple things that happen. Number one, you start getting distracted with how you look. You know, is the lighting right? Is the sound perfect? Is my hair nice? Is the makeup great? All of those things are not what you should be focusing on. You got to look not at the camera, but through the camera at the person who needs to hear what you have to say, who's stuck at that at that hump that you got over years ago. But if you speak to them and not the camera or not look at yourself in that in that screen and fight that that reflex, then your message will become so much more powerful because all of a sudden you're projecting and you're not reflecting. And that's that's the important thing. And uh, the, the the analogy I use sometimes is, you know, when you when you talk on video, you got to realize that uh, I think the most recent statistic that MSNBC did just recently is that uh, 69% of video on social media is viewed by somebody sitting in the restroom. So I literally took my, uh, when I read this, I was like, that's, that's profound. So I took my, to my, uh, my phone, I walked to the toilet. I sat down and I thought, okay, so this is, you know, 69% of my audience. They're sitting in the toilet. How can I speak to this person? And a few things came to my mind. No, I, this was a real exercise. I pulled out my phone and I started scrolling through social media, looking at some videos. And, uh, and number one, I realized that the top bar on the video is super important because that comes on from the bottom of the screen. You know, you scroll bottom to top, the title comes on before they even see your face. So that title being bold and legible and attention grabbing is so important even more than the video itself. Because if your title doesn't grab their attention and get their thumbs to stop scrolling, for 1.7 seconds, which is how long it takes for the video to start autoplaying, then your video, no matter how profound it is, doesn't have a fighting chance to even get started getting good. So number one, those titles are super important. Number two, uh, here's another statistic. I love statistics, and I know you do too, Stefan. 85% uh, of videos on social media, and this is Facebook, LinkedIn, not YouTube. YouTube is an exception. Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, IGTV, they're watched without sound. 85%. Yeah. So, and I realized that real quick. Why? Because as soon as the video came up and the, the sound speaker started blaring, I'm in a public restroom here. There's someone to my left, potentially someone to my right. And <laughs> with the speakers blaring, that's a little bit embarrassing. So I have two choices. Either I could quickly mute the video and continue watching, or I could just move my thumb a quarter of an inch and that video is gone forever, potentially. So um, the thing is, as soon as I mute it, if there's no captions burned in, I can't consume it. I can't read lips. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I haven't been trained in that discipline. Most people haven't. So, 85% of people, no sound. If you don't have captions burned in, that means they're actually a part of the video. They're not some of these fancy overlay things because that doesn't always work out. You gotta have it burned in. You're gonna lose 85% of your audience. So that's number two. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is this. I've, I have a lot of clients who come from the big stage speaking arena and they start coming on. They're just like, how's everybody doing out there? You know, turn to your left, give that person a high five. And that energy is awesome when you have thousands of people packed in a stadium. However, you have to match the energy of the person in there. And the person sitting in the toilet, it, he's not alone. There's actually two people. There's you and them. And you're having a private conversation with one person in a restroom. So you, ha you want to match that energy and speak to them as if you're speaking to one person, not to a crowd, not to millions of people. Stop using terms like you guys and everybody. Just start saying you. Talk to one person and use the tonality as if you're having a conversation across a coffee table at a Starbucks, potentially. And then you connect with them at their level. So... Yeah. Um, so that's so, so important. I want to re-emphasize that in case uh, people just don't get the importance of it. You got to calibrate. So if I yeah. were to have a conversation with you like we're having now, but I'm to really loud like I'm on stage talking to Ken Okazaki, that sounds really fake and uh, not calibrated and not authentic and... Mm not even helpful yeah not at all not at all and the thing is that those kind of that type of performance can work if it's actually shot in a stadium where people see the context 
that you're in front of thousands of people. And, and that makes sense why you're talking like that, why you have to project so much energy. But if you're shooting a video using your cell phone or your webcam or whatever camera you have, you're just one person. Have a conversation. Share. Don't preach. Yeah. Very good. Did, uh, so any other tips uh, that you wanted to share in this little segment? So you've got the title. Make sure that you yep. nail it. Uh, realize that most people... I call people... that the toilet strategy. And the toilet you know? strategy. I like that. So It's, it's, it's toilet marketing. What it is. <laughs> toilet marketing so make sure you have captions burned in most people aren't uh, aren't uh listening to the sound of it and just uh speak to one person calibrate to to that uh audience of one i love it cool so so that's the toilet strategy what other strategies do you have do you have the uh uh the kitchen strategy or the uh outhouse <laughs> strategy or the... <laughs> well you know, I, I, if you don't mind, I just want to share a small diagram here. Yeah, and yeah, I realize that there's, uh, there's a lot of types of business owners. And I think that most people, when they get started, well, if, if you can't see this and you're listening on your, on, your, uh, on your podcast or something, then if you draw a line up and down and on the top you have uh, unstructured and structured, my dyslexia is coming out here. And on the very bottom you have inspiration. You, you know, people who do things when they feel like it. And then across left to right, you've got people who are introverts. And then all the way to the right, you have the extroverts. Now, if you look at this and you think to yourself, where am I? A lot of people, if you're honest with yourself, most people start right around here at the bottom left where you work on inspiration and you're an introvert. You're an introvert because you don't have too much experience yet. And it's hard to kind of put yourself out there so you kind of shy away and you do things when you feel like it now a lot of people start there and that's totally fine but it's not going to get you very far so there's two directions you could go a lot of people go up here to where it's extremely structured sorry i just messed that up it should say structured at the top not unstructured structured but introvert and the people here are really really good at the technical stuff we're talking about you know email marketing copywriting right we're talking about uh, trip wires and automation uh, SEO, a bit like what you're absolutely a genius at. You don't have to get in front of people and do a big show and and uh, you know lights and and perform. You ha you got to know your numbers and you got to know you know some people are into coding and systems. That's great. Now you can go all the way to the bottom right where you work on inspiration and you're an extrovert. And the people here are going to do amazing at networking events, right? And public speaking. Now here's the thing. If you're in the bottom right, then you might be in a lot of trouble right now because you can't get very many people in a room together it, with this situation. You're stuck at home. So the the kind of people that video marketing, at least the style I do, works really well for, come from here. And this is where you want a lot of structure around making video. If you can just follow some step-by-step -step checkpoints and know that your videos are going to get the maximum performance because of the fact that you have some structure and you're projecting and you're you get to live in your extroverted sense and like live vicariously through your videos then that's what video marketing works for and the kind of people who don't necessarily want to learn all the the technicalities of building mm -hmm. uh, landing pages and coding and graphics design and all that just want to get in front of a camera speak their message and also reach the right people. So, um, by the way, if, that was very slick. How you just whipped out your stylus and just started drawing on this. I love chart. drawing. Yeah, yeah. This is really, really slick. It shows that you are savvy with technology without having to brag or uh, you know bring in any stories or anything. You're just demonstrating your your prowess with regards to technology. Just so subtly working it right into to the talk i love it and and so what what tech are you using is that just an ipad or ipad pro or a remarkable tablet or like what 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 sort of thing is that it's simply an ipad yeah. and there is i'm just mirroring it yeah the, to my computer there's a, a app called reflector and uh, just the apple pencil ipad yeah. and 
I, I do teach courses. So what you're seeing here is just worksheets ripped out of my workbooks. That I so I've, I've taught this material before. I'm pretty familiar with it, <laughs> and uh, I love just drawing with the pen. It's, it makes it feel like I said, when you're sharing with someone, like mm. in a coffee, in a coffee shop, then you just write on the with a ballpoint pen on the back of a napkin, right? That's the environment I want to bring into a conversation, not get be overproduced. Because when you overproduce things, people feel like it's you know like you might be trying to compensate for something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and. You, it's not finished that those uh, pages are, uh, that you just quickly uh, flipped through uh, mm -hmm. with frameworks on them, like there's a funnel uh, image and so forth. They're not all filled out with all the details. That's where you come in and, and kind of annotate and, and use your stylus to uh, narrate through the the framework or the, the, the model. That's really... Uh, much more interactive and conversational and one-to-one uh, -one kind of friendly. Yeah, I really like it. Well, Stefan, I'd be happy to get you set up with something like this and uh, and show you how to do all this and set it up later if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And there, there's more, <laughs> like there's so much nuance to this that yes. you are, uh, you're a detail guy. And just looking, uh, for those of you who are listening, you're going to miss this. Maybe go to my show notes page and, and watch the the video portion uh of of this interview because in the background of uh ken's like i don't know studio house uh w w home you know, office home office you have color coordinated your bookshelf oh my goodness that is that uh, that's that's feng shui that's uh classy that's just elegant it's it's uh, it shows attention to detail, maybe a little OCD, but it's so cool. I just love it. And then on the other <laughs> side exactly. of your shoulder, on the other shoulder, you have. Uh, well, why don't you describe it for our, our listeners? Sure. So as far as the color coding goes, I actually had uh, my daughter who I asked her to help me with this. She was, uh, I think, uh, seventeen at the time, and she did all the color coding. And I thought, oh my god, why didn't I think of that before? And because I do remember books by color first, and when I'm looking for, it, I could find it faster just by looking at the colors. Uh, I'm a very visual guy. On this side, uh, you know, I actually a lot of people approach me and say, "Could you help me set up my home office to look like yours?" Because, you know, when you're on conference calls, which a lot of people are these days, if if all things are equal, including like if you're bidding for a contract and the price and the value are similar. Two people, one person just looks a whole lot better than the other, is more vis visually appealing and sounds better. You just have a much better chance at closing that deal and with the competition. But uh, so the books, these are all books I've read, and uh, you'll recognize a lot of them if I go closer. But on this side, uh, is, there's the clapper board because I'm a video guy. It's just a bit of my branding. Uh, this is my vision board. Those are all photos of, of my children, actually. Uh, you can't really see it from here. That's a humidifier. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> and uh, Okay, so and, before uh, you go on, I got to point out that you have a vision sure. board, which is a very kind of personal development, kind of Tony Robbins sort of thing to do. Uh, how have you manifested some of your big visions uh, like of the future? Uh, can you give an example of, of some something that uh, came true from your vision board? Sure. So... This vision board is actually specifically just about my children. Uh -huh. And um, I remember uh, at one point as my teens, as my kids were going through their teens, my oldest is 22 right now. And my, my the second oldest is 19. My youngest is 12. But there was a stage where I was seriously concerned about, are my kids going to make it through life? You know, you know, teenagers, they, they do worry parents, as I probably did when I was a teen. And I just mapped out how do I really want them to turn out you know what kind of and I didn't go with jobs and things like that or income because that's too much of me projecting on them and at one point I did hire my teenage son into my business uh, he's no longer working here but my vision was for him to find an, uh, a situation where he was completely where he felt like an authority where he felt respected and where he could exercise what he loved doing. So I taught him marketing. He put, came into my company to help me with marketing. He learned everything he could. Then he got headhunted into a, uh, there's a company called McCann. I don't know if you're familiar with that. They're based out of uh, New York. They're an advertising firm. Yep. 
And uh, they headhunted him from my company. As a dad, I was so proud of him. As an employer, I was a little bit upset. I was just like, damn it, they took my best talent. But, <laughs> if, you, but if you can't right uh, now, keep your family on, uh, on the payroll, I mean, then uh, that's... <laughs> anyways, that's, that's impressive. That's really great. Uh, so good for him. So he's handling some some brands that uh, I, I can't say for confidentiality, but they're definitely household names. Yeah. Uh, you've got this branded all over anything to do with technology. Um, he's, you know, uh, well, that's all I'm going to say. He'll probably get upset if he finds out that I, I spilled too much because it's very confidential. But uh, he's he's uh, really, really happy in the environment he's in. And at one point he was in trouble with the law. And I was seriously wondering, am I going to be, when, when I visit my son, is it going to be in a you know supervised situation in some kind of prison? Like I literally had this these thoughts going through my mind at one point, and that's why I made that that vision board, thinking, what do I really want, and how can I just support them instead of trying to, to, I, I guess shoehorn them into what I my vision, yeah. and that's when things are going wrong. So uh, that's that's just a, a bit that's about beautiful. That. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing and being so. Uh, transparent vulnerable it's that's that's awesome so you were going to explain what's on the next uh shelf there sure happy to so well uh, on on and behind you and we'll, we'll shelf, get to the, the we'll get to the next form um model yeah these are all antique cameras here because the i realized that you know the cameras i actually use and i'm just gonna pivot here real quick my my desk is a bit messy i'm gonna point my webcam over there these are this is the normal gear i use these are uh there is a these are Sony FS5 cameras, and I have a video agency, and uh, I just love cameras. I'm Japanese; I can't help it. So that's just <laughs> so I like to have them in my, my peripheral. But when you have cameras that are you know they're always the latest thing; they they get outdated really fast. So these are antique cameras. They're all at least 50 years old, and they're all made of metal because then that's timeless. And I'm always I'm gonna be happy to have them there all the time. Uh, it says on air, and that. That light goes on so that it's actually just always on. It's just a bit of decor. It feels like a studio. And I'm at home. I want to feel like I'm in a professional work environment. <laughs> it's, it's that simple. Yeah, that's really cool. And it's a little bit of kind of, I don't know what the word is. It's a little fuzzy in the background, but in an elegant sort of way because of the f-stop that you've set, uh, I think. I don't know a lot about photography, but uh, is that correct? That's right. So I have a webcam that uh, I actually show people how to s tweak the settings on their webcam to get this look, which a lot of people want. And a lot of people actually have a hard time. Let me demonstrate something really quick for you. Yeah. Now, I, I do this a lot when I help people set up their home studios. And I usually start with the camera being at the wrong angle and show you what it looks like with, first of all, this is, hold on one second. I'm going to open this up here. Now, Wow, that looks this so is, different. Most, this is what most people start with. They got some sunlight coming in. Right. And the face is just kind of flat, and the camera's working hard to try to make it look good. Now, there's a few steps. I'm going to be walking around so the sound might go in and out a little bit. Yeah. But step one, if you want this to look good, you want to cut out the sunlight. Sunlight, it works when it works, but when it doesn't, like different times of day, then you're just going to have fluctuating results. So, you know, the blinds, you know, get... Walk that out, right? Ceiling lights, what they do is they just make everything look kind of flat. Yeah. So I don't use ceiling lights. I've got two lights. Okay. One is, and if you're wondering how to position your lights, this is super easy. Now, this is turning into a webcam class, but I'm happy to do this. I love this. This is awesome. <laughs> Stick your arm in front of you. Yeah. The distance between your shoulder and the camera should be one arm's length away. That's the distance. And that's how you get a blur. Now, the position of your lights, you have two lights. Turn 45 degrees to your right, and then 45 degrees up. That is going to be your main light. Okay. So 45, 45. Exact same thing on the other side. 45 degrees to the left, 45 degrees up. That is what's called the fill light. Now, you'll notice that one side of my face is slightly brighter than the other. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a lighting technique called the Rembrandt triangle. And it's, it's, it sounds technical, but it's really simple. You'll see on the left side of my face here, it looks like an inverted triangle, mm -hmm. this lighting technique. So you just want to have lights that have dimmers so that one is brighter than the other, and you get this inverted triangle shape 
on the opposite side that the main light is coming from. And you just adjust the brightness to get the shape and you never look at a Hollywood movie the same again. If you watch the movies where there's a superhero character, they're almost always lit to have an inverted triangle under the left eye. Yeah. And this is the the thing that people never notice, but when you get it right, it looks different. Everybody says, wow, this, the lighting looks good. So look for the inverted triangle and you, you just want to dial down the light that's on the left side until you can see this. That's it. It's that simple. And you're not using like a regular Logitech webcam. You have a special setup for your camera so that it can, uh, like my Logitech doesn't have f-stop settings on it or anything like that you're actually using a digital slr camera right let me show you now this is this is i don't know if anybody listening is going to be able to uh, appreciate what's going on here well <laughs> so they can go to the to show come notes <laughs> come to the show notes guys come to the show notes so i'm going to put this in selfie mode so you could get a preview of what i've got this yeah. is a it's a 400 hundred dollar camera uh it's, it's called the sony a5100 but if you have an old DSLR hanging around the house, chances are it's got an HDMI out port. You plug that into your computer, it turns into a webcam. Yeah. And as far as battery goes, you just want to have it plugged into power. It's, it's a little bit complicated sometimes to get the settings right. But once you dial it in, then you get the wow reaction almost every time. And people think, wow, this person actually pays attention to detail. And uh, I like the way he looks. It, I, I get a lot of positive reactions around this, even when I'm not talking specifically about video. And uh, I can actually shoot video content straight into my computer because I've got the setup like this. It's easy. Yeah, that is so cool. That is so cool. So uh, I interrupt, interrupted you earlier. You were going to show us another framework uh, or, or model of yours. Do you, do you want to go uh, to that? Happy to. Happy to. So the... This is uh, how most people see traditional funnels. And a lot of times I have a live audience and I just have them call stuff out. Like when you think of a funnel, what do you think of? And I think your audience understands the term funnel, right? Is that, mm -hmm. is yep. that fair? Yeah, yeah. So most people think, you know, like email marketing, right? They think, uh, you, know, uh, you know, ads, uh, trip wires. They think uh, squeeze pages. And basically, all the technical bits, uh, let's just say landing pages, um, what, what's something that comes to mind for you when you think funnel? Oh, SEO, of SEO, course. SEO, <laughs> yeah. I was wondering when you were going to say that. Right here at the <laughs> yep, there we are. And the thing is that some people really excel at this. And when you get all this right and you have it dialed in, then you go through this process and you, you do get a great return on investment. And this is like a well-oiled machine with a lot of moving parts. And it's like a Rube Goldberg machine in some ways. Everything has to seg you know, transition to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, and it works. It's perfect. Now, for the technically minded, this is wonderful, but I want to posit that there's another way to do this. And I look at every single video as a funnel in itself. Now, let me break this down for you. If, if this is getting a little woo-woo, then, or, or uh, difficult to understand, Stefan, just please ask me or, or stop me right there. Mm -hmm. But if we start at the top, then the, the title at the top of your video, this section right here, is what people see first. And if the thumbs don't stop scrolling, and I just calculated this recently, uh, we go through 87,000 screens of scrolling within a year on average. Wow. Okay, 87,000 I want that time back. <laughs> That's a lot so, of wasted time where I could be reading books instead or uh, playing with my kid or, or my, well, I have grown kids too, but they don't really uh, take to playing with my, I've got my seven week old who, or seven month old who's, uh, he, he loves playing uh, with me. So anyways, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of time and people make split second decisions about whether they're going to invest a little micro chunk of that time with you. Yeah, exactly. And I call this uh, hockey puck titles. And the reason I call this hockey puck titles is Wayne Gretzky, arguably the best hockey player in world history. You know, he famously said, a good player goes where the puck is. A great one goes where it's going to be. Now, the way I see this is a lot of people think of 
what content do I want to make that is amazing? They, they make that content. Then as an afterthought, they think of, oh, what, what catchy title can I put on it? I do everything the opposite way, way around. This is titles first. You, there's a specific way to research, and this actually does involve a little bit of SEO. Uh, there's a process to see what titles are converting and stopping people from scrolling mm -hmm. to your target audience, and then how can you deconstruct and then reconstruct it to make it original, keep the same emotional pull, SEO value, but make it an, a, a title that people will stop scrolling for. Because once you get this title dialed in, then this will connect straight to what's called the Hilda. Now, everybody's like, what's a Hilda? <laughs> Hilda is a system I had to invent because I'm shooting videos. Uh, you know, my, my flagship program in my agency is called 52 and 2, where we shoot 52 weeks of content in two days. And the thing is, no matter how many events you've done, how many hours you've spoken on stage, shooting 52 unique pieces of content in two days will turn your brain to mush. Um, the the, the part of your brain that cons the part of your body that consumes the most calories is actually uh, next to your heart, your brain. And when you got to think like crazy, you get exhausted. Your concept starts coming out like crap. So I thought, how can I take the thinking away and just give them a cookie cutter system to mold their content into? And that way, people can perform for a very long time without having to think too much about it, reinventing it every time. Oh, yeah, and, so and a little stand little stat here for our. our our geeks in, in the audience here. Uh, if it, you imagine your brain is 2% of your body weight, 25% of your calories get consumed by your brain. There you go. I'm going to use that next time and I'm going to reference you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, please proceed. Yep. So Hilda stands for hook. You got three seconds to get them to decide to continue to keep watching. Okay. After they're hooked in, then you can introduce yourself. There's a specific formula for this. Okay. Uh, first name plus uh, who you are and how you help. And there's, I, I, I'm running out of time. I'll get into this in a later one. We'll go deeper. Introduce yourself after you hook them in, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Then you want to lead their anticipation to what you are about to deliver, which is hopefully going to be amazing value. And once you deliver amazing value, which is going to educate, entertain, and edify your audience, then you have released dopamine in that person's bloodstream. They're feeling happy. They're feeling good about what you just shared. And that is the best time to ask for a micro commitment at the end of the video. This process done in three to five minutes over and over and over again. I've done over 4,000 videos using this format. It just flat out works. So, so Hilda, hook, yes. introduce, introduce yourself, uh, L lead, D deliver, A ask. Yes. Okay. Do it in that order. Now, remember the title first. Title comes first. You got a rough idea of how you could use that title to fit your content. The content is Hilda. Now, the reason we have Hilda is so that we can connect them to what I call the missing link. Now, the missing link. Oops, that's a G. I'm I'm a bit dyslexic, so excuse me for my writing style, uh, but I am memorable because I keep messing up. <laughs> the missing link here is the thing that your ideal uh, customer never knew they always needed, and that is priceless to them, but free for you to give. Now, some people say it's a it's a it's a lead magnet, and there's a lot of of uh, of overlap, but you want to take people from neutral and potentially confused to over the moon because you solved a simple solution for them. Now, for example, uh, I, I'm going to put in a, a plug right here. If I told you that you can, that every single one of my videos I that have gotten over 10 million views organically had two things in common. They had uh, a big header at the top and titles burned in. And I could show you how under three minutes I could shoot and edit that video and get captions in it and put it online using only my phone, would you be interested in that? Now, usually when I say this, 99% of the audience is going to say, yes, I want that. Mm -hmm. Did they knew, know that existed? No. It's the thing they never knew they always wanted or needed. And can I give that information freely? Yes. Is it priceless to them? Pretty damn close if that's the pain they're feeling right now. So that's an example of never knew, always needed, priceless to them, free for me to give. So, so an example of that uh, solution 
would be mm -hmm. Splashio, for example. Splashio. Potentially, except to do it from your phone is a is a headache. It's it costs money every single time, and the other challenge is that uh, it, they have a one week turnaround. No, sorry, twenty four hour turnaround. I could do this in three minutes. Mm, okay. Three minutes from shooting to having the captions burned in. Gotcha. Okay. And, so, the, and the title Spatio up is, on the top. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I actually, if you're interested, uh, you know, stick around to the end. I'll show you how that works. <laughs> That's awesome. Again, it's it's the missing link. Now yeah. that you know that it can be done in three minutes, there's a gap. Like, and the gap is the information that I can give you freely that doesn't cost me money once yeah. I figured it out. Yep. So uh, now you got to create these and, and demonstrate to them that there is a missing link and that you've got a solution. Now... The missing link when people, when you present this, then this is where we are not going to be selling, but we want to do a smooth segue. Now, if anybody's been on uh, LinkedIn or Facebook for any more than, you know, I don't know, a month, you're going to have gotten a lot of spam from people in the, in the DMs, right? Stefan, when's the last time you someone's pasted a big, huge block of paragraph into the chat, hit enter, and then just thinks that that's what marketing is? Yeah, I hate that. It happens all the time. When I add people that uh, you know requested to be a LinkedIn connection, and then within a minute or two, they're spamming me with their offer, uh, that just annoys the heck out of me. Right, and that is again using a toilet analogy. It's it's like it's a constipated lump of crap that <laughs> nobody actually, I mean, think about it. In order to assimilate information, you need to actually read it. Nobody reads through a page of paragraphs that's pasted into the DMs. It just doesn't happen. You can't assimilate it. You, you, you're constipating your audience and they don't like that feeling and they just want to get rid of you. Yeah. And it's not calibrated. It's not emotionally intelligent it's not meeting them where they are at it's not first mm -hmm. seeking to to understand and then to be under or first to under be under yeah to understand and then be understood <laughs> yeah so the, the the thing is that there is a right way to actually use chats and you get people to respond to your videos with a call to action mm -hmm. and then you want to smoothly segue into a chat sequence now this is a combination, and I call this a smooth segue. It's a combination of frameworks plus scripts. Now, there's the scripts. Now, here's, here's the thing about texting. You want to text like a teenager. What does that mean? One line at a time. Eight to 20 words is the ideal length. Every single line has to be calibrated to what the audience is currently experiencing. You can find that out in their, in their timeline, in their profile, also the information they're giving you. So you got to understand that when you go into it, it's like slopes. You want to start in a downward slope where it's smooth and easy. You want to appreciate, affirm, and also connect. So you start with a thank you for you know, the comment or the reaction to your video. And then actually do some research on this person. Who is this person? What are they like? What's going on in their life? Talk about that. And then once you pick up momentum with that downward start, start, then you want to start going uphill a little bit. Ask some calibration questions. How are you going in your business? What's working? What are your goals? And then you got to so you got to understand slopes. There's this this pattern that happens when you start. Then you've got uh, signals. You got to know when it's a red light. This person is not a good fit. Let's stop. When it's a yellow light, which is going a bit too fast, or they don't understand something, let's circle back or pause. And the green light is this person is hot and they want to know more. Keep going. Mm -hmm. So we've got slopes, which you got to understand. you got signals. And the third thing you got to understand is there's three checkpoints. Each of these checkpoints is a signal, whether you want to, uh, it's a red light, yellow light, or green light. And these, sig these uh, checkpoints are number one, do you have rapport? If you don't have rapport, then you don't move forward. Right? And if you, once you get rapport, then you go to another slope, which is going to be the permission to share. Never, ever drop a link in someone's DM unless they ask for it. You can get them to ask for it, but don't say, hey, let's get on a call. Here's a link. It's like, come on. You know, like I didn't ask for that. Uh, so permission to share. And there's a specific script and framework to get you there. And then the last one is red pill, blue pill. It's like you can bring people to decision right inside the chat. And 
uh, inside the chat either to either to get on a discovery session with you to see if you want to do a high ticket sale, which could be anywhere from you know five thousand to you know hundred thousand dollar deals, which I have personally done, or it can be a low ticket thing, which is anywhere from five hundred to five thousand dollars, which you can sell inside the chat without ever having to pick up the phone. Now. The beauty of the smooth segue is that once you, oops, there we are. Once you dial this in, then you can leverage a team to use your scripts and frameworks, use the system and bring it straight to a sale without you actually having to be there. But it is 100% your voice because of the fact that you designed this and you built it over time. Now, once you get the system dialed in and it's starting to work for you, then the next thing you wanna do is think about how can you take this entire process, which is mostly video, no, no, uh, no copywriting, there's no landing page, there's no sales page, it's just videos and chat, that's all you need. How can you take this and then how can you flatten the curves? Because in the beginning, each of these checkpoints, like I said, there's slopes, right? Rapport, then permission to share, then red light, blue light. At first, there's a challenge. But the good thing is, since you're doing it in chat, it's all recorded. And every time there's friction, you can look back and think, how can I make those curves a little bit smoother so we can just glide from one to the next faster and keep improving and improving? So, guys, this is the video marketing funnel. And it's easy as pie. And you don't need anything more than your phone. If, as long as it's got an internet connection and a camera, you're good to go. So that's the thing that I want people to understand. Uh, video marketing is simple. It's easy to get started. Now, when this is really, as far as I can see right now, the fastest way for people who are uninitiated to get started. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you don't want to pay for you know what three hundred dollars a month for ClickFunnels or uh, wh whatever it is, whatever software you're looking at, or take a WordPress course and learn that, th there are a million ways to go. This is quick. This is fast, and you can get results in testing material uh, without without a big hurdle. So. That's what I love to share is think of it like this. Yeah, the that's video. great. That's great. And it's uh, it's so mm, authentic and uh, just you're presenting your whole self and you're not uh, hiding behind email sequences. Not that it's hiding, but it's like it's it's only a part of you. An email sequence is not a full reflection of the depth of your personality and uh, all the trials and tribula tribulations you went through. It's not vulnerable, typically, in an email sequence like a video can be. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I, I got a little bit fired up there. I, I probably wasn't speaking in the same tonality as someone sitting on the restroom toilet, but uh, <laughs> I get excited about this stuff. It's it's my passion. Yeah, that's awesome. And do you have any kind of, uh, I'm, I'm going to geek out for a minute here. Do you have any sure. kind of special uh, lenses or anything that go with an iPhone? Because I've seen some of these things. I haven't bought any, but uh, you, you can uh, get a, like a, it's not really a clip-on type of uh, thing, but it, it attaches to your iPhone and then it massively increases the depth of field or decreases it or something. I don't, again, I'm not a photographer, but uh, I've seen that sort of thing. I've seen different kinds of uh, tripods and, uh, of course, you can um, uh, use like a lavalier mic with your iPhone and, and improve the sound quality? Like what are some of the techie gadgets that you mm -hmm. might consider adding to uh, to the iPhone or Android phone Absolutely. if you unfortunately have one of those? <laughs> <laughs> so the one of the that's one of the most common questions I get asked is what technology, what gear do I need? Now, I will go into that. But before I do, I just want to preface this with saying, I've seen too many people numb the pain of not having gotten started or having getting gotten results with video yet by buying more gear. Like they they haven't dialed in their storytelling skills yet. They haven't dialed in Hilda. They haven't dialed in connecting and engaging with an audience. And even though they're trying, they haven't gotten there. And then the the human brain is is uh, tuned to want to always take some kind of action. So what they do is they go and buy more gear, and they, it's a loop, right? So I know, Stefan, that you have... So what you're saying audience. is it's, it's, it's an avoidance tactic for many. It is. Okay. It is. 
and and it's it's fun to buy gear. It's it's uh, what do they call it? Uh, retail therapy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it it is fun, but it's not actually going to move the dial nearly as much as you understanding the frameworks. Hilda writing great titles. Mm -hmm. So that being said, uh, understanding that this is what I usually advise people is go make your first sale. Use that money to buy the gear. That's the reward for the results, not the prerequisite for the results. It's you got to flip it around. So I know you're getting results. So here we go. As far as uh, phone goes, if you have an iPhone or uh, a recent phone that's less than three years old, and your your phone is going to be held at roughly arm's length, this at this distance, there's so much noise canceling technology in here that cancels out noise from this direction and picks up noise from here that you don't need a lamp. Now, if you want to do a full body shot and you want to set the phone on the other side of the room, then you're going to have to have some type of clip on mic or a shotgun mic. Now, those are uh, anywhere from, you know, $10 to, you know, $2,000. <laughs> I use a, a $5,000 microphone, which, which I actually have sitting right here. And uh, this is literally the same microphone that, uh, you know, that's used on the Oprah show and the Ellen show. It's, but it's, it's really high end and I don't recommend that. I recommend wow. something in the 10 So you don't want to drop price. that mic. <laughs> you don't want to Actually, step on that mic, right? The truth is that uh, it's got a lifetime warranty and I can drop it, step on it, dunk it in water, and it won't get damaged. That's really? the that's a part of the price that you pay for it is the durability. <laughs> it, nice. It's actually uh, surfers use that a lot, that microphone a lot in the water. Oh wow! Because of the fact that it's super durable. Now, um, so number one is uh, if you have it at arm's length, you don't need additional audio gear. And number two is in order to enhance the audio, there is a simple technique, and it's the way to hold it when. When you can't hear well in the real world, you cup your hands behind your ears to channel more of the sound waves into your ear. Right. Now, with video, most of the sound comes in from the bottom. Now, with the new iPhones, that's actually coming in through here. But anything older than uh, two years, it all gets picked up down here. Now, a lot of people, they have they hold their phone like this, and that's exposed to wind. You can get like a lot of wind in there, and it's picking up sound from there and from behind. So. This is a really cool trick. Think of cupping your ear, hand behind your ear, but cup the microphone to your to your phone so that the sound, number one, this hand is going to block out sound from behind it. Number two, it picks up your voice and channels it straight into there. It makes a world of difference in audio quality, yep. just the way you hold it. Think of that as your ear. Now, as far as lenses go... And that's a great trick, by the way, if you're playing uh, audio through your speaker and you can't quite hear it, uh, if, if you it works the just, other way too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do that all the time if I can't hear it, if I'm not wearing headphones. Cool, that's great. Now, and, as far as uh, clip-on lenses and stuff, yeah, uh, I've I've tried all those gadgets. Generally, not worth it because okay. here's what happens: I got my phone. I'm like, let's say I'm I'm in a situation. Maybe I'm driving and I pull over and it's a beautiful scene and I think, oh, this is a great place to shoot a little content. And then I pull out my camera. I'm just like. Damn, but I forgot the lens in the other car or at home. Now, every piece of tech that you add on top of just your naked phone is one more reason that your brain might might cause you to procrastinate shooting that one bit and capturing that moment, that eureka moment, if you are really going to carry it with you everywhere so that when you have that moment of inspiration or when you're in the zone, you can just whip out your phone and do it, that's fine. But statistically, I found it actually stops people from creating their best content because they don't have the right gear at the right time, at the right moment. Mm -hmm. And you, the, the, the moment, the opportunity to catch lightning in a bottle is lost. Yeah. Because, or maybe even just the five minutes it takes to find the gear, even if you have to fiddle with it, you know, unscrew this and screw that. And, you know, just that is that calibration time. It's, it's time that the inspiration is dropping as time is passing and that it just is not worth that 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 little millimeter of of quality that you might gain. So, Technical so in, in, in other words, perfection is the enemy here. It stops you exactly. from capturing that lightning in a bottle. The thing is, the first video you make is going to be the hardest. The tenth one will be much easier. The one hundredth one will be way easier and better. So, fail fast, fail early, do a whole bunch to get to your best version right. of of your video self. So, because what you, you have this uh, 
kind of ingrained in I, I, even in your muscle memory here this idea of Hilda and not introducing yourself first I still make that mistake sometimes where hey I'm Stefan Spencer co-author of the art of SEO like, oh I just lost them they don't care about that they care about what I'm gonna teach them so I start with the hook yeah so exactly uh, can you give a quick example of starting uh, with a hook like a maybe a recent video that you shot sure Sure. So how about this? Throw me a topic and I'm just going to pretend I'm an expert at that topic. And I'm going to, because I, I like to be candid, um, throw me a topic. It could be anything. Relationships, weight loss, uh, Feng money. Shui. Feng Shui. Okay. So now I'm not an expert in Feng Shui. I kind of understand the concept and I'm just going to make something up following the Hilda pattern. Okay. okay? So, um, so let's just say, Oh, how about this? Do you ever wonder what p position you should be at the table when you have guests over? Hi, my name is Ken. I'm an expert, and I've literally written the book on feng shui. Now, I've worked with a lot of families, and families specifically have business. And when you have a family environment, and sometimes you bring business over to the house, it's there's a dynamic shift that happens where at one point you want to be the head of the family, and you want to be at the head of the table and really kind of dominant. And sometimes you want to bring business associates in where you want to be in a peer level, or maybe you're trying to win a big contract, and you want to let the person know that you're actually want to be submissive to them and work and cooperate with them. So what if I told you that the position of the chair at the table will make all the difference in your relationship with your family, number one, and number two, whether or not you're gonna nail that seven-figure deal. So here's what you wanna do. Now, I don't know what you actually wanna do, <laughs> positioning your furniture around. And so I, I teach the content there. So up until there, I did the lead. Yeah. I deliver some, some, something that they can practically do. That was awesome. Actually, they could actually. And then at the end, I'm gonna ask them something. I say, look, here's the thing. I've walked into so many people's homes and I'm talking about from college dorms to million dollar mansions. And sometimes I walk in there and I just feel the energy can be so much better with just a millimeter shift in a couple of things. Now, I love to share this kind of content all the time and it's for free. What you wanna do, if you wanna get the full playlist of the 12 things to do to radically improve that flow of energy through your home, your office, or even your college dorm room, then click down below, get the free playlist, and you can go through this and optimize your home immediately. Hope to see you soon. Talk later. That's great. So yeah, That's you, the ask. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, I know that you have a program that you can uh, teach our listener how to apply all this stuff and a lot more and and there's accountability and stuff and and uh signing and commitment and signing up for uh, a course and you get some coaching with it i think and stuff can can you uh explain what uh you just launched recently with your online course yeah absolutely so uh, with my agency um I usually do, uh, we actually do everything for our clients. We actually show up at their door and we shoot a year's worth of content and they have they just sit there and have the, the stuff performed on them. And I realized that, especially with COVID-19, so many people are stuck at home. And to be honest, my film crew in the US and Australia, they're also grounded, literally. So I took just the stuff that is gonna move the dial for people who are at home and they've got a phone and they've got some motivation because frankly, there's not much else to do, to actually start marketing themselves using video online. And so everything I put together into a course called Video Ninja Secrets. And uh, I can use the word ninja because I'm Japanese. There's no cultural appropriation here. So don't. <laughs> now, the, so I, I thought to myself, what if all you had was your phone and some tactics? Could you make money? And this is the shortest path around it. It's six weeks. There's new content every week. There's a coaching every single week to help people get unstuck to get from one stage to the next. And you also get my feedback and my eyes on your material to, you know, to see how you can make that millimeter shift and get people to, you know, really engage with your content with the intent to get them into a selling situation. Now, I completely separate the selling from the giving. What I show you how to do is to give in public, sell in private, because nobody likes an overly salesy, sleazy kind of person. And that's not the kind of person I would want to engage in. So I think 
what kind of person would I want to engage in? How can we put that on video? So yeah, it's a, it's a program that uh, I just started three weeks ago now. When you watch this, I don't know when that will be, but uh, it is it is working really well. And if you want to get in, then uh, I guess is there a link below this stuff in or should I'll I include it on a the link in the in the show notes. You can add a, a link um, to the video. Not everybody's going to be watching it. Some will be listening though. Mm -hmm. So if you speak the link into the uh, yeah uh, in, into this recording as well, oh. and I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just go to Oz Media. My writing is so messy here. Dot global. There we are. Slash video ninja secrets. Oops. There we go. I think I like video because I I suck so bad at writing. <laughs> <laughs> ninja secrets. There we are. Uh, or no. I don't know why I can't write this. My wife always laughs at me when I write. She's like, you never write in the right order. But uh, if you can see that, yep. Oz Media, as in Wizard of Oz, dot global, and then slash Video Ninja Secrets. And uh, the price right now, it's uh, 2997 However, this is an introductory price. If you just uh, hit me up, whether uh, it's on this show, or in my own DMs, find me. I've got coupon codes. It's 997. I'm making a special offer because we're really new at this, and I want to get more people, get tons of success stories, and really get this ball moving. So uh, there is a coupon code. It, it will expire. So I won't say it here because by the time you get it, it might expire. Just get in touch with me, and I'll get, hand that off to you. Awesome. And your main website, to get in touch with you, to uh, see what your agency does and everything, is ozmedia.global. That's it. Actually... It'll be easier just to go to kenokazaki.com. And I'm actually shifting because I've been advising my clients for a long time to brand themselves as the company. Yeah. And it's working really well. And I realized I need to do that for myself. So I just shifted my main page to kenokazaki.com. Gotcha. Come check it out. You'll find a lot more information there. Awesome. Yeah. I, I am a big fan of personal branding because that's the brand you take to the grave. I mean, Invested exactly. a lot of time and money into building the Net Concepts brand, and then I sold it. <laughs> I sold that whole company, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Now I need to start all over again with a new brand. So, yeah, definitely invest in your personal brand. So thank you, Ken. This was fabulous. Uh, I, I'm really uh, hoping that, that our listener will take advantage of your amazing offer. That's a very uh, generous uh, price discount to uh, drop it down to 997 so definitely listener take ken up on uh, that offer and uh, follow him on social media and i uh, just saw him recently i saw uh you were on what, what was that um podcast or uh, facebook the Live? misfit nation i believe misfit nation yep that's it uh with uh, jason Cis uh, Cis how do you pronounce Cisneros. it cisneros thank you so that was, yes. and you you just crushed it on that. I was really impressed. So anyways, thank you so much, Ken, for joining us today and sharing all this great content and and wisdom that you've accumulated and and uh, built out over, over the years. This was really good stuff. Thank you, Stefan. I appreciate it. And uh, I really enjoyed this conversation. And uh, thanks also for sharing about, uh, you know, what, a bit of what you did. And I love the questions. It got me thinking. <laughs> uh, about about my past a bit so thank you for that yeah yeah awesome okay well listener do check out the show notes for this episode there's a lot of great stuff that we talked about uh that you'll be able to access through the show notes at marketingspeak.com and we'll catch you on the next episode i'm your host stefan spencer signing off <laughs>